Well, welcome. In this particular video, we're going to further our study of um, exponential functions and exponential models. In the pre previous video, we learned how to find an exponential equation if we're given two points on a graph. Well, in the real world, that's not always going to be the case. They're not, they're not always going to be graphs given for us. Where there's not always going to be two points that are going to be exactly on the line. Um, so we're going to have to find some other methods to uh, find an equation. Now, today what we're going to be starting out doing is very similar to what we did in the previous video. Uh, but it's going to be based more on story problems, where they're going to give us uh, two specific scenarios. And we're going to treat those scenarios as coordinates. And from those two coordinates, we're going to come up with a system of equations. And then use those system of equations to figure out our values of A and B. And then we'll have our equation, our exponential model is the way the book will describe it. And that's all we're going to cover in this first video for this section. In the second video for this section, you'll see how to do this on a calculator. And then in the third video, we're going to see how this applies to something that we call half-lives. So let's start by looking at a story problem involving exponential models. So here we have a city, Huntley, Illinois, had been a small farming town. But when a large housing development was built, the population growth pattern changed. Two special censuses gave village planners the, the data in the table at the right. And then in part A, it says find an exponential model for the data, but let's read on because this will be important. Where P of T is going to be the population T years after 2000. That's important. Our value for T is going to represent the number of years after the year 2000. So we're going to treat these as two coordinates, yes, but we're not going to treat them as we see them. In other words, our x value for a year is not going to be 2003, it's going to be 3 because that represents, whoops, that represents 3 years after the year 2000. And the y value is going to be 12,270. And then the other coordinate for the year 2005, well that's 5 years after the year 2000. The population was 16,719. Now recall from the previous video, and if you haven't watched that previous video for Lesson 2-4, you'll want to do that because then this will make more sense. But recall in that previous video, what we did is we looked at how to solve an equation, uh, or how to come up with an exponential equation uh, by hand, by using a system of equations. So the first thing we do is we start out with the second coordinate. where we, Again, these are in the form y equals a times b to the x power. So for this one, our y value is 16,719 equals a times b, our x value is the 5. And then we write down the first coordinate, again starting with the y equals, so it'll be 12,270 equals a times b to the x power, which is cubed. And the next step is we're going to divide these two uh, equations. Now when I divide 16,719 by 12,270, I get 1.36 I'll say 1.36259 uh, to be more exact is my value for when I divide these. And when you divide these, remember the a's cancel each other out, so we're left with the b's. And b to the fifth divided by b cubed, we subtract the exponents, giving me b squared. Now to figure out my value for b, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And when I take the square root, I get a value of b, which is 1.1673. Now we just have to figure out, well, what's our value for A? So to find our value for A, I'm going to take this value for B that I know and put it into one of the equations that we had to begin with, either the 16719 or the one with the 12,270. I'm going to use the second one just because I'm using slightly smaller numbers. So now I could take 1.1673 and cube it. I'm going to get a really ugly decimal. Or to make my calculator is going to know the order of operations. So what I could do is I could divide both sides by 1.1673 being cubed. And when we do that, we get a value for A of approximately 7,714. So that represents that in the year 2000, this city had a population of about 7,700 people. Well, now we need an equation. Well, that's what they're asking for. So our equation is going to be in the form y equals a times b to the x power. So it'll be y equals my a, which is 7714 times b, which is 1.1673 to the x power. 
So now if I wanted to figure out what would be the population in the year 2015, we do not put 2015 in for x. We would put 15 in for x because that would represent the population uh, 15 years after the year 2000. So we would put it in our calculator like this. We go 1.1673 to the 15th power. And when you do that, you get approximately 78,500 as your answer. So you about 78,500 people. Okay, I'm going to have you guys do this one on your own, but first I'll help you get it set up because let's talk about a couple things with it. It says the population of a certain cell type was observed to be 100 on the second day and 2,700 on the fifth day. Assuming the growth is exponential, find the number of cells present initially and the number of cells expected on the seventh day. So we can't jump right into finding out how many there be after the seventh day. I need an equation first. In order to find the, the equation, I need to know my initial amount and then I need to know my growth factor. So we need to treat these, just like we did on the previous one, as two separate coordinates. And I might be saying, well, there's only two numbers, 100 and 2700. Sometimes they're going to give you numbers written as digits, but sometimes they're going to have them written out in words, like the second day and the fifth day. And those words are just important, as important as the digits. So, And you also need to make sure that you don't always just put it in the order you see them. This is not necessarily going to be the coordinate 100 for x and 2 for y and the coordinate 2700 for x and 5 for y. We need to do a little bit of digging here. We need to figure out what is my independent variable and what is my dependent variable. So we here, here we have a cell uh, type, so a certain number of cells. And the other variable is going to be the number of days. Time is almost always going to be an independent variable because it's going to happen on its own. And it is in this case because the number of cells depends on the day it is. So the day is going to be my independent variable. So I'm going to have two coordinates here. My first coordinate is going to be after two days, there's 100 cells. And after five days is my other coordinate, there is 2,700 cells. So those are my two coordinates. So why don't you guys take a minute, so pause the video, and hit play when you're ready to check your answer. Okay, so this is what you should have gotten. You should have gotten 24,300 cells as your answer. Now, if you did not get that, it could have just been in your rounding because I just rounded to the nearest tenth. If you had used more numbers past the decimal, you're going to have a more accurate answer. So you might have had a number a little bit more than 24,300. Um, but you want to just go back and check. You should have gotten a value of B, with, for, or you should have gotten 3 as your value for B. The reason why is when you divide these, we get 27 equals B cubed. Take the cube rid of both sides, and that's how you get 3 as your answer for B. Put 3 into either equation. I put it in the second equation, since we're dealing with smaller numbers. Remember, it's going to be 3 squared, which is 9. So 100 divided by 9 is about 11.1. .1. Then you get your equation, put 7 in, and that's how you get your answer. So we're going to stop this video here. And in the next video, you're going to see how to uh, do this on your calculator. And in the third video, you're going to see how to do this with... Um, half-life problems. So with that, make sure you watch those next videos so you can complete your assignment.